So reading in Psalm 147 still, and it says about the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise the God, O Zion. Talking to the church. Israel became church. We became church. We came out of Israel. We came out of the Jewish nation. We're not Jewish, no. But we came from the Jewish nation. Christ was a Jew. Israel was his heritage. We have to accept that. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. Do you fear the Lord? When God speaks to you, do you turn a deaf ear? Do you have any fear against the Lord? Because when the, the Lord speaks to our hearts, hey, we have to listen. We have to take it into account. We have to humble ourselves before Almighty God. You get down on your knees, you know. It says in the Word, Jesus said, you know, don't worry about what people think of you or what people say or what people do. They can only kill your body. Our Father can cast our whole soul into eternal judgment, fire. Be careful. Be careful that you're not listening to God. This is a word to the church today. This is a direct word to us as we'll hear as we go on. But he's not interested in our strengths and our resources. He's not interested in what we can do for him. Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? He's not interested if it's coming from a heart that's not listening, if it's coming from a heart that is actually teaching people wrong, if it's coming from a heart that is going away from God's word. He's not interested in that. He's interested in those who worship in spirit and truth. And he says, I'm not interested in what your resources are. I'm only interested in what your heart is towards me. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. And, and so Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides... He provides all this from verse 12. He says, Praise for you, God, for your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He's protected you. He has blessed your children within you. He's given you children and, and children that you can teach and bring up in the admonition of the Lord. He makes peace in your borders. So he, he's given you peace around you and, and, and helps you to live in peace with others because he gives you a different attitude for a start. That helps. That helps a lot. And it says, and, he f and fills you with the finest wheat. So he gives you good food, you know, he supplies your needs. That's the important thing. He sends out his commands to the earth. <clears throat> his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. I think we're going to get some snow soon. <laughs> he gives snow like wool. He scatters the frost like ashes. We had that this morning, didn't we? Um, and he cast out his hail like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statues and his judgments to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise the Lord. So <clears throat> there is this vision that says you need to get right with God. And he is a, a God who provides and he will help you. But he can also send you hail and snow and everything else that's going to cause problems. And we all think we're doing really well in this country at various times. Isn't it amazing how <clears throat> the snow and ice brings us to a standstill? Isn't it amazing how very strong winds and, and you know, <clears throat> storms and hurricanes, we just had Sandy, you know, in America. Look what damage and devastation it can do. And we think we have everything together. We think we can get our house and we get our ducks in a row and we've got our job and everything. And suddenly something comes along and destroys us because we have not listened to the God, God of the heavens. We have not listened to the voice of God when he speaks to us. And I believe that that's the judgment that's actually on the West at the moment and certainly in places around the world. That God in his infinite wisdom, he is bringing this world to an end. There will be a coming of, of Christ. There will be a judgment in the last days. And unfortunately... We are not really listening and taking it seriously. And God says, you need to take me seriously or it will be like the days of Noah when there was a flood and you all scoffed. And you, look what happened. There was a remnant I saved. Are you in that remnant? You need to make sure you're in that remnant today. Because if you're not, then, you know, we're told the second time it's going to be, the elements are going to, are going to, the elements are going to burn up. It's going to be done in fire, not water next time. We have to be careful. When the world comes to an end, it will be a, a very catastrophic event. But hopefully, we will be meeting him in the air, those of us who are the remnant. 
Let's trust God for that. That's his promise to us, that he actually will redeem us. And uh, he redeems our soul. And then we come into the New Testament, into 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. And here again we see, humble yourselves. Humble yourselves before Almighty God, because we're told here it's all in God's time. That's what's coming through 1 Peter here. Everything is in God's time. Peter says, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. I just want to remind you of something today, saints. That's what he's saying. That you may be mindful of the words. We know that kind of word today. We know about being mindful, don't we? And kind of working out what's going on. Which was spoken before by the holy prophets. So he's going back to the prophets. And of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Saviour. So this word... How do we know it's from God? How do we know what books of the Bible that we should have and which ones we should throw out that aren't good? Well, this is a clue here because 1 Peter says <clears throat> that you be, may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. So we had the Torah of Moses, the book of the law, the five books of the Pentateuch. Then we have the prophets. Then we have the minor prophets and the major prophets. And then he says also the words of the apostles of the Lord and Saviour. These were people who, with, who were with Christ. These were people who were disciples, his, his twelve. And then there was Paul, of course. Judas, we know, fell away. But Paul became an apostle because he was met by Christ on the road to Damascus. He became an apostle of Christ. <clears throat> and so these are the words that we need to keep in the book. These are the words that tell us the law, the prophets... And the words of the apostles in the letters, that's how we know which books we should keep, really. I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ tells us as well. But this is very, very key to our understanding. And he says, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in in the last days, <laughs> walking according to their own lusts. And, and this is something else we have to be careful of and, and be very wary of. And that is that we have lots of things going on in the, in the body of Christ from very eminent men and women in the body of Christ who are servants of God, but they sometimes go into error. We have to be always careful of that. And some of the teaching that's coming, coming in about prosperity and about um, success and about all sorts of things... Um, we have to be a little bit careful that we're not going beyond what God's Word tells us. In fact, some of the stuff that's coming out is actually against what God's Word says. Uh, you know, I don't see in the Word that God says I'm going to be a rich man. I am already rich because my riches are in heaven. But you know, you've got to be careful what people are telling you, in these, especially the TV evangelists, because most of them just want your money anyway. So you have to be really, really careful what you're listening to and what you're, what you're taking in, what they say something in the context of something else, and you think, oh, right, that must be the right thing. You go back to Scripture, and you see the first bit of what they said was right, but the second bit, they were way off beam. So you, have to be, you always have to keep your Bible open when you're, you're listening to someone on the TV. Make sure you, you know, because it's your responsibility to make sure that what you're being told is God's Word. And the same as when I'm preaching or any other person's preaching, have your Bible open in front of you and check out what I'm saying. Because if I'm not saying what God's telling my, me to say, you will know. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. There is something in us that knows the truth inherently when we hear it, if we're Christian. If we really are God's people, we will know because we are of his sheepfold. And so, therefore, we have to be careful and watch for those people that come and try and teach us wrong things. Be very aware of the false teachers and the false prophets that will come. <clears throat> and here we are again in the sense that God himself is the one who maintains this, this planet that we actually live on. He says... In verse 4, because these people who, who are scoffers and uh, in the last days, and we're certainly in the last days as far as I'm concerned, they are walking according to their own lusts. And that's really important to understand that. And saying, where is this promise of God, of his coming? Where is it? You know, that's the sort of thing that I'll be saying, you know. They're, they're not actually believing that God is coming. In their minds they're thinking, well, he's not coming yet. I, I do what I want to do. 
For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Verse 5. This is 1 Peter chapter 3, and this is verse 5. For this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were made. The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, and by which the world that, it, that then existed perished, being flooded with water. So it reminds us of the flood. And this is 1 Peter. So, you know, Peter the Apostle, the one that Christ says, you know, you are the rock, you are the you know, pebble, feed my sheep. He's the one who's saying this. And he was obviously with Christ and he understood this. He says in verse 7, But the heavens and earth which are now preserved by the same word. You listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying now. So he said that out of, out of the word of God really, the beginning of creation, creation happened out of the word of God. The word is God. The word is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he spoke and it happened in the creation, in the beginning. And in verse 7 it says, But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So we are preserved by God. The planet revolves but because we're preserved by God because he put it in place in the first place. I'm told in science that if the, if the earth was out of its axis about two degrees, we'd all fall off. It's a bit frightening. It's a bit amazing what, what we realise God is set in motion here. And we're in a precarious position, in a sense, and yet God keeps it all together. And we trust God for that because that's his promise. And it's not going to happen until he decides it's going to happen. And he's not going to wind it up until everyone has heard the word on this planet, generally. And now with, uh, now with television, God television, now with the kind of TV communications we've got around the world, with the satellite communication, we're at the time now when everyone in this world can actually hear. Pretty much the whole world has heard the message, almost. So, you know, coming to the end times now is the fulfilment of prophecy. We've got to be very careful that we get right with God. That's what we're saying here. And it says, but beloved, do not forget this one thing. Don't forget this one thing. That with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years. <laughs> and a thousand years is one day. To God, it's not the same as that. We, we live kind of minute for minute. But with God, time isn't the same for God. But God, God has his time. That's the important thing. And so it's all in God's time. Everything's happening is in God's time. We think we're in control. <laughs> we think we're in control. We want to be in control. That's why we're so competitive. That's why we're always making our decisions. We have to be saying, if it's God's will, I will do this or do that. And not just from the point of view that I'm listening to God and then I'll do things. No. If it's God's will, in other words, if things work out, the way God plans them, then I will be able to do this. You know, next week I'm going to drive somewhere, and if it's God's will, it might not be. Something might happen in the meanwhile. I have to be wary of the fact that I'm not in control. And Hurricane Sandy and all sorts of other things shows us, shows us all, we are not in control. We are not in control at all. We think we are, but we are not in control. God's in control. Let us, let us, let us forget that, because God is really in control of this whole world. And he will bring us to heal if we don't listen. He will. And that's what happens here. <laughs>